Hey everyone, welcome to the Zip Farm. Today we're gonna to give you a brief video on how to grow strawberries in your Zip Grow Towers. Strawberries are a great high value crop for in your Zip Farm indoors or in a greenhouse setting. They do pose some pretty specific challenges though, uh, especially with pests um, that we'll go get into later on in this video. Strawberries can be broken down into three main types, uh, one of which is June bearing. So these strawberries produce early in the season and are triggered by short days. In indoor uh, growing, we typically try to use day neutral or ever bearing varieties because the light length can run a lot longer and they produce cyclically year round. There are many different day neutral varieties of strawberries you could be using in your indoor zip farm. Albion and Seascape are some of, the, some of the more common varieties. In our zip farm, we're using Albion uh, and we've had a lot of success with this variety. Strawberries thrive under a moderate temperature of about 20 degrees Celsius during the day and that helps them achieve maximum pollination and production without shutting down flowering when it gets too hot. You can propagate your strawberries from both seed or from a bare root stalk. I strongly recommend using a bare root stalk because they tend to grow a lot faster. There's a lot more varieties available and the plant tends to be a lot stronger starting out and uh, seed, seed stalk tends to take um, a year plus before it starts to fruit whereas bare root stalk is within a few months. It's important when using strawberry bare root stalk that you're using a clean root stalk. Um, some insects and pathogens can come in on your roots, rootstock, so it's important that you're starting with a clean source and also cleaning and disinfecting before you plant them into your towers. Some growers like to use a 3% hydrogen peroxide solution and dip the actual rootstock into that before rinsing it and then planting it directly into the tower. You may also use fungicides if you want to. Sometimes fungicide drenches are used in, in strawberry production. There's also biological fungicides such as Bacillus subtilis that you can drench the strawberry crop ahead of time and colonize the roots to protect against any pathogens. When planting your strawberries, it's important to make sure that the crown of the strawberry plant stays out from the tower a little bit. This makes sure that water isn't running over the strawberry and making the crown wet all the time. If the crown stays wet, you may run into some disease issues with diseases like crown rot or anthracnose or root rot. It's also important when you first plant your strawberries that you remove the flowers and any fruit for the first month or two after planting to make sure that the plant is driving all of its energy into root production and vegetative growth. This makes sure that you get a higher yield down the road and also makes a stronger crop that won't fall out of the tower. When growing strawberries, it's also important to remember that you do need some level of pollination. This can be achieved by hand with a paintbrush in the flower or with bumblebees. Be sure to check out our video on pollination uh, to get some more information on this. Strawberries also do not like a high salt level in their fertilizer or a high salt level in their nutrient solution. So you want to maintain an EC of about 1.0 to 1.2. We actually find a lot of success with a typical lettuce mix, a master blend lettuce mix that we use for other crops in the farm. But uh, if you wanted to optimize a bit, you can look into more specific fertilizer mixes that are designed for hydroponic strawberries. Lastly, it's important to note that strawberries are very prone to pests, especially spider mites, aphids, and thrips. You'll want to look into some pest control measures and preventative biologicals to control this, as well as keeping your farm as clean as possible to prevent outbreaks of these pests. That's it for today. Once again, thanks for watching and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, follow us on Facebook or Instagram for updates on new upcoming videos. Thanks.